Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of October 2020 on setting item cost on SAP Business One. We are going to cover setting item cost when document is not based on return documents and AR credit memo documents. Let's get started. From time to time, the need to handle and document a return is necessary and is part of daily business life. Return requests are always based on deliveries or AR invoices, but sometimes users need to create return documents without a previous document. For such cases, SAP Business One enables you to choose how to maintain the item cost. For this, SAP Business One gives you the option in return documents and AR credit memo documents, the ability to add from a form settings perspective, item costs and enable item cost setting. For such cases, SAP Business One enables you to choose how to maintain the item cost. Select the item cost field in the document lines with the checkbox of enable setting cost for manual updates or set a price list to be used for the returned item cost, or even both. From SAP Business One 9.0 and above, users can now choose how to set the item cost when the document is not based on a previous document. For this, navigate to Administration, System Initialization, Document Settings. Once the Document Settings window opens, click on the Per Document tab, and then we will choose from the Document drop-down information, Returns. In the returns window, we're going to select allow setting item cost when document is not based. This enables you to set the return cost for items in the return document when you create the document from scratch instead of from any other document. Enabling setting cost on all document rows by default determines whether the enable cost option on the contents tab of the returns window is activated by default for all items in the return document. If it is activated for all items, you can then set the return cost manually or to a price list included in the following option, the price list of return cost. The price list of return cost enables you to set return cost for the following. Select one of the price lists defined in SAP Business One. The item prices defined in the selected price lists are set as their return costs. Less purchase price price list, use this option to set an item's return cost to its price the last time the item was purchased. Last evaluated price price list, select this option to set an item's return cost to the price calculated the last time the inventory valuation simulation report was generated. Note: In companies that do not manage a perpetual inventory system, the price calculated the last time the inventory valuation report was generated is set as the return cost. Once you're satisfied with your selection, click Update to save such selections. Next, we're going to select from the document drop-down list AR Credit Memo. By clicking the Allow Setting Item Cost when document is not based, this enables you to set the return cost for items in an AR Credit Memo when you create the document from scratch instead of any other document. By having the Enable Setting Cost on All Documents by default selected, this determines whether the Enable Setting Cost option on the Contents tab of the AR Credit Memo window is activated by default for all items in the AR Credit Memo. If it is activated for all items, you can set their return cost manually or to a price list included in the following option. Price List of Return Cost the price list of return cost enables you to set returning costs for the following lists. Select one of the price lists pre-already determined in the SAP Business One. The item prices defined in the selected price lists are set as their return costs. Last Purchase Price List selects this option to set the item's return cost to its price the last time the item was purchased. Last Evaluated Price List Select this option to set an item's return cost to the price calculated the last time the inventory valuation simulation report was generated. Note: 
In companies that do not manage a perpetual inventory system, the price calculated the last time the inventory valuation report was generated is set as the return cost. Once you are satisfied with the selections you've made, click Update to save these changes. Now that we have saved our chosen settings, let's navigate to our main menu under Sales AR, click on Return so we can verify what the document looks like with those settings showing in the screen. First, we will navigate to our form settings, click on table format, and here the easiest way to find said setting is to type in enable. Here we'll make visible enable setting cost and also return cost. Click OK. We are now able to see that the enable setting cost and return cost columns are visible in the document. To more easily see that information, Let's go to View and click on Fit Column Width. This will make sure that we can read the entire column. Let's select our Customer Maxi Tag. We're going to contrast hopping from Return Request and creating the Return Document versus creating a Return Document from scratch and seeing what the Enable Setting Cost and Return Cost possibilities are. Hopping from a Return Request previously created in the system, we will draw all data and we will not customize it. Here we have all of the items that are, in this case, being returned. As we can see, the Enable Setting Cost checkbox is unselectable, neither is manually updatable the return cost for each item row. Differently, create a document from scratch, as an example, we will then again Select MaxiTech, and we will bring in an item that we are returning, such as this laptop case. Here you can see that because the document is not being copied from a previously created document, we are able to now enable setting cost, and we are able to enter whatever cost we feel is necessary for the return cost of the item. We will then select the return reason and the return action. Once you're satisfied with the document, click Add to save the document. This action is irreversible. Click Yes to continue. Now that we have created our return document, let's bring back our last return document to verify that the return cost indeed applied correctly. By clicking our last record, we entered $50 return cost. In order to verify, let's click on the Item Master in the Item Master window, right-click and click on Inventory Audit Report. We will click on Expand to see all of the transactions. And as we scroll down to the last transaction in the system, we see that the Return 21 came in with a return cost of $50. Next, we'll take a look at the AR Credit Memo and see the comparisons there as well. Again, by going to the main menu under Sales AR, we will now click on AR Credit Memo. As this is the first time we're opening the AR Credit Memo since making the changes in document settings, which now allows us to setting item cost when document is not based, as we saw in our returns document. First, we must verify our form settings. By clicking Form Settings, and then Table Format, we will type in Enable. This will provide us the ability to make visible and check enable setting cost and also return cost. By clicking OK, we now see these two columns available in our main document window. To make sure that we can see the entire header, we'll verify by navigating to View and then clicking on Fit Column Width. Here we're going to show you a contrast between copying from a pre-existing document to create the AR Credit Memo versus creating the AR Credit Memo from scratch. We will now select our customer, Maxitech, where you're going to be copying from pre-existing document, in this case, a return. The Drop Document Wizard provides you the ability to draw all data or customize by line what would you like to bring to a document. We're going to bring in all data. Here you have a laptop case 
from the previous example, the unit price of 105. The return cost automatically changes to $35, and we're not able to manually change this particular column or document line. In contrast, if we were to create the document from scratch, we'll again select Max Deck as one of our customers and bring in the same exact item, which is our laptop case. We see that the enable setting cost is checked and the return cost is now available to be manually updated. We are able to enter the cost that we feel is suitable, the return reason, and the return action. If you're satisfied with the document itself, click Add to save. Once adding the document, you won't be able to change it. We would like to continue. Now the document has been saved of return cost of $75 for a sad item. In order to verify, let's click on the Item Master. In the Item Master window, right click and click on Inventory Audit Report. We will click on Expand to see all of the transactions. And as we scroll down, we will find our credit memo number 10. There, we see a $75 return cost for the item. This concludes the presentation on setting item cost on non-based documents and bring us to the tip of the day. Tip of the day, display watermark on draft and cancellation documents. If a marketing document is added in error, has become invalid, or has no concrete transactions associated with it, you can cancel the document or save it as a draft but still store it in the database. In order to have these watermarks present when printing these documents, navigate to Administration, System Initialization, Print Preferences. In the General tab, make sure to have Print Draft Watermark on Draft Documents and Print Cancelled or Cancellation Watermark on Applicable Documents checked. Click Update to save such changes. A sales order draft document and a cancelled invoice can be seen as examples. Being able to set an item cost from a non-based document is just one example of how you can better utilize SAP Business One to help you perform your daily workflows more efficiently and easily. Join us as we help you learn more about SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications bell so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.